Hello everyone, so my name is Mohammed Maqsidi and I'm one of the TA for the Engineering Materials Lab for the Spring 2020. So the experiment that we are going to cover today is the, is the cold working. And the whole concept is that we are interested to see if we, have, if we are given a piece of metal, like in this experiment it's a brass, it's a combination of uh, copper and zinc. We want to see if we start to deform this piece of metal permanently, like a plastic deformation. How is that going to affect its mechanical properties? Like for instance, its stress or its hardness. Okay, this is one thing. So, and then uh, we are also interested to see how different degrees of plastic deformation is going to affect the hardness. That's why we are going to uh, do the plastic deformation with different uh, intensities. The other thing that we are interested in is that after we do the, uh, uh, the permanent plastic deformation, which is called the cold working in this case, because the temperature that we are going to deform the material is almost uh, less than uh, 0.5 of its melting point using the absolute uh, temperature. But after we do the cold working, we are going to realize that maybe the, the hardness maybe gets increased, but how about the other properties? Like the ductility is going to get worse. So always remember that, that uh, competition between the, uh, between the hardness and the ductility. That's why to, to kind of improve that ductility part, we are going to put the, met the, the metal piece into furnace with three different temperatures. And then we, uh, we take them out and then we are going to actually see how that heat treatment cause any change to the mechanical property of the material. In this case, the hardness test. Okay, this is the overall goal of, of this experiment. But with more detail, uh, the cold working uh, the cold working is that actually you try to deform a material. The material that we are going to be using in this lab is, is brass samples. And as you can see, they already have a, they already have a rectangular cross section. We have, a, we have a, a rolling mill. Okay, so we have a mini, a mini top actually, a rolling mill here, that we are going to be using this device. And then we try to reduce the cross section of this or elongate it. Basically, we are, actually, we, are, we are changing the area or we are changing the cross section area or the thickness. Okay? And we are going to be doing that for 10%, 20%, and 40% cold work. You can find the the definition of the code work and the equation of how to use that in the lab manual that is provided to you. Uh, okay, so, uh, but, but before doing that, we are going to keep one material as the base material. We are not going to do any hard working on that. So initially, we are going to measure its hardness, its thickness, and width. Okay, so let's go and do the hardness measurement on the base material first. Okay, so we are, we are here with our uh, usual Rockwell hardness testing device. Okay, so as you remember, for the brass, because it's a soft metal, we have to use the scale B. For the scale B, we have to have the, the major load set up to the 100. Okay, and then we also have, remember that we also have to select the right scale from the control panel. Okay, so we have the scale B here, and then we also have the right amount of major load. So this is, this is our base sample that we are going to measure its, its hardness. So we lower down the base and then you are familiar with the procedure, but anyhow, we do it once here. So we start spinning the reel and then we are, we are applying some load to stabilize the contact and everything. But once we hear that the load has reached to that mountain, then we just let go. And then it's going to press the inventor, it's going to come back, 
measure the amount of time and the formation, and it's going to give us the value for the Rockwell hardness PSK. And as the, the number that we are getting here is 69.5. So we are going to do that for, for five different locations, but we make sure that we leave enough space between different measurement points. Okay, so this is the this is the roll milling device. This is the one that we are going to use actually to do the code working. Okay, so this is a sample which we are going to reduce its thickness or the cross section area by ten percent. Okay, so we have already measured the initial thickness. In this case, is three three point seventeen millimeter, and using that equation, we find out that it has to go down to two point eight five millimeter. That's, so we have to basically reduce this thickness uh, to, to that value, okay? We are going to do that through multiple sequential steps. You don't want to go with one pass. You don't want to go to that point. One is that it requires a lot of energy and force. You might break down the, the instrument. And then the other thing is that the more a step you take to go down, the more uh, dislocations you are going to be generating in, in, the, in your material and that's why I kind of give rise to that increase in the hardness that you are hopefully going to see that after doing the, uh, doing the cold working. Okay, so the principle of this device is that you have, a, you have a cylinder here which is rotating with some RPM that you can set that, that, uh, that rotation and then there, there are basically two cylinders so you put them, but this one is fixed and this one is, is rotating. You can set the rotation in forward or backward direction. So what you can do is that you can, using this, uh, this wheel, you can adjust the distance between those two cylinders. So initially, we make sure that we can place our specimen, can kind of freely be a space between those cylinders, okay? And then once that, that the, the, the roller is rotating, we are going to gradually rotate this wheel clockwise so that we are actually decreasing that, that gap, meaning that we are forcing the material to squeeze between or extrude between those two, uh, those two mills, those two cylinders. Okay? And we are going to do, do that through our multiple steps. So the main, the main power switch of the device is here. Okay? And then here we have the control panel. The, the, the option that we have for a control panel is that we can adjust the, can adjust the, the RPM, the rate which is going to change the, if the rate of deformation. Okay? We, we usually keep it around uh, 25 RPM is a, is a good number for our experience. Okay? And then you have, you have the you have the option to the duration of rolling. Okay, sometimes the the specimen might get stuck there, so you want to have also a reverse. Okay, but um, <clears throat> one, and then you have your safety switch, your emergency brake here. One point that I want to you keep in mind is that make sure that while you are operating it, let's say you place the specimen here, make sure that it's going in that direction such, uh, such that. No, no one is no one is allowed to stay behind the device because sometimes if the if that step that you are going to reduce the thickness is too large, it's going to apply too much force and then it's going to shoot the specimen outward. Okay, so no one is allowed to stay in this area. So what we can do is that we initially, before have before having it having it run, I'm going to place it between those two those two cylinders, okay? And then I can just feel it that this is, a, this is a good amount of initial gap, okay? And then once I am at that point, I will start the, the machine again. But because, because the specimen length is a little bit short, and then for the safety reason, you don't want to get your finger stuck in Easter, I'm going to use another specimen to kind of push the, push the material between the two split points, okay? And then, it's gonna come up from the other side, and then I will place it again. But this time, I'm going to, if, uh, if you can, if you can maybe, if you can read it here, 
it's, it's a graded cylinder. It's a graduated cylinder. Okay, so you can actually predict that by by ro by rotation how much how much of that gap space you are reducing that. Okay, this is one thing to do uh, to make sure that you are you are not going over the the final thickness that you are supposed to get. But the, 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 the other conservative way is that because we are going through multiple steps, after every code working stage, we are going to also measure the thickness, just to make sure that we are not passing that much. But now I have rotated for some specific amount, and then it's just, it has done a little bit of code working, it's hard to see it now. But I will be keep, I will keep doing that, I will keep doing this process, and then I will show you uh, the very kind of final stage of how it's going to look like and how it's going to come out of the sample, okay? Uh, one point that I, I forgot to mention is that we always want to keep the keep the machine lubricated. So we have the oil here, and then you have two, two kind of uh, kind of holes that you can, you can pour the oil in, okay? Make sure you do that. The other practical point is that as you are doing the, as you are doing the cold working, your sample, uh, your, your, the plate can get bent. So the trick to make it straight is that uh, for the sequential passing, like if you are, if you are, if you're fitting it this way, for the next one, try to rotate it. So it gives you a little bit more, more even and less wavy plates. Okay, so that's why I'm gonna rotate it. For example. And you can, you can hear the noise that it's, it's making and, and it's already trying to kind of bend the sample. That's the shooting that I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, now that I have done some code working, I'm gonna measure the thickness and make sure that I'm not over, I'm not uh, extending, I'm not going beyond what is needed to reach to that 10% of the code. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, so during the code working, because we were flipping the samples multiple times, we were able to obtain the samples that are relatively flat. And that also, that, that not only helps us with getting the sample which is homogeneous, but it also helps us with the, one, once you're doing the hardness test, if you have a curved specimen, it's much harder to do the hardness test compared to a flat sample, okay? So what I want you guys to, to realize is that and we have we have taken the measurements after the code working. We have taken five hardest measurements, and we have the we have the data written down on the board for you guys. For the ten percent, twenty percent, and forty percent, five different measurements. So what you need to do is that you need to work with those data, get the average and the standard deviation. Okay, but I just want to show for you that the average data. It's written also on top of the sample here. And for instance, for the base metal, the average hardness was 69. After 10%, we got to 78. So you can see the effect of hardness. 20%, we were able to go up to 80.6. And then after 40%, we ended up at 87.2. Okay, so we can see that, in, that increasing trend. But the, the reason behind that is, is a little bit complicated. But, but it has to do with the, with the as you are straining the material, as you are uh, putting energy into the material and uh, deforming it plastically, it can uh, start creating more and more dislocations. And also those, the density of dislocation are going to increase. And also the way these locations are interacting with the other is going to change. That's why you can see that with plastic deformation of a material, you are able to change the, the strengths. The, we are measuring the hardness, 
but we know that the hardness correlates to the to the flow stress of the material okay and now what we need to do the next step is that we are going to see the effect of how, effect of heat treatment and how that heat treatment is gonna change this hardness measurements so we have done the cold working 10%, 20%, 40% and we have measured the hardness. We already saw that the, the hardness is increasing with, with increase in the level of the cold working. Now what we are interested in is that we want to see how the heat treatment is going to affect the hardness. Because you have created so many, so many new dislocations, you have increased the, the amount of energy in the material. Now you want to see that if you, if you heat it up for some certain temperature, how is that going to affect the mechanical properties? To study the effect of heat treatment, for that reason, we are going to actually take each of our samples, like 10%, and then we are going to cut it into three different pieces. Okay? And then each piece, we are going to put it into a certain temperature. This is going to be a 400, 800, and 1200 Fahrenheit temperature. We do the same thing for all of our samples, 10%, 20%, and 40%. And then we leave them in the furnace for 30 minutes. And then we are going to quench them in the water and then re redo the hardness measurement. And then see how that hardness has changed after the heat treatment. This is the machine that we are going to use to cut the samples. And as you can see, we already have the three marks here. Okay, so we just have to first install the sample here. And then before tightening, we bring down the, the blade and we make sure that we are it's, it's aligned with our mark. And now that it's, it's approximately in a good position, make sure that we secure the, the work piece before doing anything, okay? Now that we have the sample secure, we are going to close the lid. And we will have the, the water and soap running to just help with, with cooling down in the cutting process. And it helps both the workpiece and also the, the, the cutting plate. And this is the main power. And then, once you start doing the cutting, you have to make sure that you really go as slow. So this whole process will take uh, 40 seconds at least. This is the 10%, 20%, and 40%. Now we need to put them in the, in the oven. Okay, these are the furnaces that we are going to be using. And here we can set the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or it's equivalent in the degrees Celsius. Okay, so we just carefully place the samples in the oven. And then the rest of the samples we put in the uh, furnaces set to 800 and 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we wait for 30 minutes and then we take them down and then we dump them into a bucket of water. We basically quench them in water. And then we do the hardness measurement again. So we need to take the time. So we have kept the samples in the furnace for 30 minutes. Now, what we, can, what we have to do, we have to quickly drop the samples into this uh, water buckets here, which is called the quenching in the water medium, okay? So we will do this, the same process for all other samples. And then we are going to measure the hardness again and see how the heat treatment has affected that. Okay, so in this region you can find the, the, the hardness after a different type of cold work, 10%, 20%, 40%. So you have the five reading for each 
what you what you need to do is that you need to work with those data and then get the average get the standard deviation and then uh, plot how the hardness is gonna change after doing the cold work okay and now here you have the you have the, all the measurements uh, for different temperature points for 400 800 1200 for 400 you have the 10 percent 20 percent 40 percent and on each of those you have three readings okay so that you can you can do the same thing get the average and everything what one trend that we we can learn from this whole data is that as the temperature as the heat treatment temperature increases you can see that the, on, on average you can see that the hardness starts to decrease okay and <clears throat> within a row let's say treating with a given temperature still the hardest value is still keeping its original trend that with the increase in the percentage of the cold work the hardness keeps increasing okay so you, if you refer to the lab manual you are asked some specific questions and you are given some recommendation of how to analyze your data and how to how to compile your report so i would suggest you read the lab manual carefully and uh, start analyzing your data and then if you have any further question feel free to email email the the ta and we will be more than happy to to help you us okay good luck and looking forward to your lab reports